Hi everyone, my name is Bobby DeCellis. I'm here today to talk about the PDB Link. Um, they want me to explain the features of the box, but actually it's easier to tell you what it doesn't do. So it won't do your taxes, and that's about it. No, um, this box has a whole host of features, and essentially it operates within two modes. Um, so, but before we get into the mode, let's talk about hardware. Let's talk about the basics. So we, on the side of the box here, we have the input. Now this is a 100 amp Bates adapter that allows us to plug in with a stinger, but you see your Bates cable, you've got your breakers, you've got two DMX inputs for its DMX mode, and one EtherCon input. Now alongside that, the input here for the power, we have the power pass through for the Bates as well. And we also have three more ethernet, uh, ethercon switches here, and they're all PoE, uh, high powered PoE plus. So we have a lot of uh, available power on the network here. Um, so let's first start talking about the DMX mode. Uh, up in the top right hand corner here, we have a light that says, a box that says node or DMX. It is not lit as illustrated here, we are in DMX mode. And that is further illustrated by the fact that it says no DMX input can be connected. So we take a handy dandy Swiss in and we plug in our DMX cable. And I always get it backwards. Pin to power, pin to data. So here we go. Boom. And we plug in our first port here. Boop. And now that we got our DMX cable plugged in, let's turn on our Swiss in. Okay. So we've got data and illustrated by the green light and we have that um, signified here. Um, now the box has a physical input, so it knows when a cable's connected. So essentially if I disconnect the cable, I lose my lights. It says there's nothing there anymore. Now, I plug that cable back into the box, but I remove it from the source. So I take the source away. Now, you'll notice the green LED on the count of three, which I will not make a sound effect, turns yellow. So that's holding last look, which is a very nice feature. I don't know of many DMX products that take care of that. Networking nodes, we know have the status mode, but um, as far as a straight DMX to OptiSplitter product, I'm not familiar with something else that does this. Great sh troubleshooting tool. So we plug back in our Swiss in, we'll go green again. And now you probably notice the screens have numbers on them. So what do those numbers mean? That is simply a digital label that I can choose what universe it is. Being that it's DMX, it's not, it can't, doesn't necessarily know off the top of the bat what universe it is. So I can choose. And this mitigates the use for tape and anything else of our old ways of identifying stuff. Now on top of this number choice, I can scroll all the way back down and you get to one, you get to the 64,000, you've gone too far. But here I've got five, it says uh, CH512 percentage and decimal. And I think a lot of us know that we mark our cables essentially by, we, on our DMX, we, we park the 512th channel at the percentage that the universe is. So with that knowledge and choosing that mode, you'll see it says one now, because I have 512 up on my Swiss end, one. And as I click up, it two, oops, I always hit channel first. As it click up, it will reflect that change. Um, it's a really nice way um, especially on larger sets when you have a lot of people that aren't necessarily involved with the rigging. A quick, easy way to know what universe they're in and, and uh, what, they're, what they're working with. Now, as we said earlier, this is a dual PDB. So, of course, that requires two DMX lines. So, we'll plug in our second handy-dandy Swiss in here. And we plug it in here to this side. And, lo and behold, we have a second green light. Now, you also notice the A is surrounded by the green and the B is surrounded by the yellow. And what that means is that these bottom, these slightly offset outlets are all the universe B, and all the ones are red. And you'll see that reflected here in the menu. 52, 52, 52, and it goes along to the, to the, uh, throughout the box. Now, um, where I think this box really shines is the, uh, is the node mode. So let's hit our fun button here, which will now light up. The box prompts us, let us know that we're going into node mode. And we are in node mode. So we have flashing red lights right now that we, that we see because this box is in, this box has two different types of LED indicators we can have. So currently this is status mode indicator. And just like with our DMX, you'll see red is, red is flashing, red flashing means no data, yellow is holding last look, and green is good to go. Now within that, we can go into our setting, we hit config, and we can scroll over to this color setting. And we'll see, click it, we go from status mode to universe ID mode, and we'll see everything changes to white. Now, in here, every universe and port will start as white, but I can go through and individually choose 
what color I want each port to be. And now I can assign universes to those ports and that way I can have a color identification tool for someone on set. Maybe they have trouble reading the screen or maybe color is just the way you guys like to identify things. Whatever, whatever floats your boat, but you have the option here. So choose orange there. I can go down and I can pick any color I want for any outlet, but the default is white and you get to choose which universes get which color um, and that way you don't have overlap or overstep. So let's go back because I actually like it in the status mode, which I would like to give Tom Howard credit for because that was his idea. And we should also note that the lights here are also reflected up here. So you see you kind of have this control bar that lets you know what's going on as it also is reflected here. Now. Um, we have, um, let's go back out of this real quick. So now we're in known mode and things are a little bit different. So before we had the top row of XLRs were universe A, the bottom are B. Notice A and B are dead now. Those don't exist. And you'll see one A, one B, you see the green and the yellow together. And what that means is now this one button controls these two outlets. I'm allowed to choose whatever universe I want, say 20. And now I have a nice linear diagram from the, the universe to the output of that, to the power. It's all very, it's in a line, easy to read, it's simple and straightforward. So that, that, that's my favorite thing about this box. It, 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 you're not looking back and forth, you're not trying to see what goes where. Uh, we all know how dark sets can be, and this is a really nice linear wave, top to bottom, you can read and see what you're doing. So um, on top of all, of all this stuff, we have some other options here on, on this menu. So um, first thing, let's go through some of these buttons. So, Right now we see it says SWAC outlets. Now that stands for switchable. This box is able to turn on and off each outlet individually. And within that, we can go into the config settings again, and we can go over here to general settings. And what do we see? We see outlet channel start. So we can choose the individualized um, start address for the outlets, as well as what universe they are in. And in the same menu, we also have DMX speed we can choose and how long our data persistence is, whether it's infinite, 20 minutes, or none. All right, we'll ship with infinite as default. But we go back, so we're in switchable mode. We have uh, outlets to go. Now within switchable mode, the outlets are off, right? Not getting any data, but I don't have my programmer, what do I do? I can hit this other button right next to hot switchable, bump, and this handy dandy graphic pops up, and you see these little light bulbs over each, out, over each outlet, and sure enough, if I hit it, turns on, I hit it, it turns off. Quite nice. Now if I'm in bump mode and I want to clear it all, I hit reset, all off. Awesome. I hit back. Now if I hit reset and I'm not in bump mode, I get a whole host of options that I get to choose from. I get to clear all bumps, I can clear the status quo, I can clear the status quo of the DMX, I can clear the AC status quo, or I can reboot the device. So I have all these different options for reset. Now this does not do a factory reset. So if we do want to do a factory reset, you actually have to hold these two buttons, back and the jog wheel, and you hold it in for five seconds, which is longer than anything else. And you'll see, I'm not gonna actually reset it. It's hold for factory reset. So it's even letting you know, hey, just so you know, you're gonna factory reset this box if you keep holding it. So we go from there. All right, so we hit, we went from a hot switchable, and then same thing, just so we can, you can see what it looks like. Okay, uh-oh, maybe I will reset it. Next to our, now we, we're in switchable mode again, but if we wanna to go to hot power only, all we simply do is we hold that hot switchable button for three seconds, as, as said by the vinyl. We do that, oh, and now everything's hot. You know, because our bulb came on, let's take that out for now. Also on top of here, we have, um, we have our resets, uh, and then um, we also have a battery. So um, if I were to remove power from this, you know what, let's just pull the stinger. Let's do that, okay, perfect. Now, so we do that, box is off, right? Oh no, I don't have power, I've got 30 of these boxes, generator's not gonna be here for a while, what do I do? Well, we have a 45 minute battery that's built into this, we hold it for three seconds, turn on. Now we're not gonna get any of output features or any status LEDs, this is just to configure the box. So we do that, it's coming on, all right. So we do that, and now we hit the um, config button now on that first page of the config button is all our usual suspects. We've got our, um, our protocols, SACN multicast, unicast, artnet. We've got static versus DHCP, um, subnets, and all that other fun stuff. So that's all right there, easily doable with the battery. Um, and then once we're done, we hit the battery button again, 
and then we choose what we want it to do. Do we want to go to battery storage mode where this thing is going to sit for a very long time and it may, may be on a shelf or it may go somewhere, maybe on a truck for a couple months, maybe you're going on vacation, we can hold that battery. We can also choose to um, just, you know, uh, keep the battery, keep the box sort of ready to go in discharge mode or we can uh, just simply shut down the box, turn it off. All right, so there we go. Box is shut down. We'll go back into our hot power. Um, there we go. Um, now on top of this, all the bells and whistles here, we've got outlets, 20 amps, we've got the XLRs we talked about. Um, we also have a five volt uh, USB adapter on the side that will be for firmware updates. Um, I think there'll be an option hopefully in the future to copy and paste profiles from one box to the next should you have a lot to set up. And then also on top of that, on the back of the box, because we're going to talk about this link system, we see we have courtesy power. So we've got a true one, we've got these outlets on the front. So we've got power from the back side, and we've also got our PoE switch on the front. Now, link system, very convenient. I push the buttons in, I pull them out. Now, imagine I've got a node that I put in here. Boom, ready to go. Boom, easy, ready to go. Uh, I, got a, I got a node in here. Hey, that node's powered by PoE. Pfft, awesome, all I gotta do is do a little one foot jumper. That node, that switch, whatever it is, is ready to go. Nothing else necessary. Now maybe I've got a more higher drain device, something bigger, maybe a legacy device that requires 120 volt power. On the back side here, I simply just pop that device into my courtesy power and I have a lovely power chain on the back side. It doesn't muck up the front of my display so I don't get confused with all these extra cables. Um, this box has a lot of exciting features and the most exciting part is it doesn't actually have all of its components yet. But there's a future, very soon future, where we'll have things like dual optus flitters, uh, wireless modules, solitary nodes, um, and whatever else your little hearts can desire. Um, and then this system will be integrated hopefully into more boxes and you'll be able to build your own bear. Um, whereas I know people think sometimes boxes have too many features. This will allow the individual to only choose the items and devices that they want. Thank you very much. Um, it's been, um, really appreciate you guys coming to talk. Um, very excited about this box. I hope you are too. And uh, you know, contact Rat Pack if you want to try one out. Thank you very much.